Premier Alison Redford's resignation was a starter's pistol in the progressive conservative leadership race. Alberta's first female premier was finished, and now PC party members would choose between three men to lead the party and the province. You got Thomas Lukasik, uh, former uh, cabinet minister. He's he called the Edmonton candidate. He's based in Edmonton. He's going after that. Plus, he's going after the ethnic vote. Jim Prentice is the Mr. Establishment, Mr. Slick candidate. He's the former federal cabinet minister, former bank executive, uh, who's come back into politics, positioning himself as Lougheed's heir and successor and the savior of the party. He's in the peculiar circumstance, though, of trying to cast himself as the outsider, while almost all the caucus backs him, and he has the clear backing of the Tory party establishment. Tarek McIver, I'd call him the Calgary candidate. He's a former alderman, really well known in Calgary. His base of support will be there. He's also, though, traveling the province, going after the social conservatives, the right wing. The race got off to an uncertain start, with candidates struggling for airtime or getting it with gaffes. I think it's so much easier to talk about the valleys because they make the news. We'll talk first about the free memberships. Uh, PC leadership candidate Jim Prentice was giving away free memberships. Uh, it caused a lot of controversy because the opposing candidate said that he was trying to buy votes. He ran a pretty low-key campaign, really wasn't saying a lot. And then he stood up and he talked about term limits. Uh, really what that did was raise a lot of questions about what was going on inside the campaign. Uh, why was he releasing this at this state stage? Um, was it an attempt to uh, distance himself from the era of entitlement under Redford? Nobody really knows in any way. In any case, it, it pretty much backfired and, and definitely a valley. Thomas Lukasik, while well, the downside we're seeing more recently, uh, this was his cell phone bill being leaked uh, to the media, a $20,000 um, cell bill from his trip to Europe two years ago. There's a lot of intrigue about that. Um, he may get some sympathy from people thinking he's been set up by somebody else. He's blaming the Prentice campaign. The Prentice campaign is denying it all. He may get some sympathy on that. But at the same time, it's going to hurt him because he ran a $20,000 cell phone bill when he was deputy premier in Europe. That's not good for him. It would be easy to say that Rick McIver's low point was deciding to take part, you know, in an anti-gay hate march in Calgary. That was bad. But I actually think what's going to hurt him more is the Sky Palace intrigue in which McIver had initially said, I cancelled Sky Palace. I saved the people of Alberta from Alison Redford's vanity project. It later turned out, according to the Auditor General, that Rick McIver didn't actually so much cancel the Sky Palace as change the furniture. And I think that little bit of hypocrisy and dishonesty is probably going to hurt him most with social and fiscal conservatives. But when the race hit the headlines, it was often because the legacy of Alison Redford wouldn't go away. We never see Alison Redford, and we never hear from Alison Redford, but Alison Redford is everywhere, and we talk about her all the time. I think that she's cast a very long shadow over the campaign, and I think it will be very difficult for whomever becomes leader to get the party out from under that shade. This was not a government that actually, um, at least the Premier especially, in her office, um, didn't really take taxpayers' dollars as something sacrosanct, that they tended to um, abuse the system. Um, especially when it came to using aircraft, that she used aircraft as a personal taxi, that uh, they had this phantom or ghost passengers that were booked so that she could fly on her own. So it was a very damning report that came out and it um, caused problems not just for Redford's legacy, but also began tainting the existing government. To some, this leadership race has become less about the new leader and more about the survival of the PC party of Alberta past few years uh, all of that has completely unraveled and now we see a fractured caucus leaks coming out everywhere ministers cabinet ministers even leaking information um, lots of backstabbing and infighting and disagreements inside the party Prentice talked about uh, perhaps inciting people to resign and holding a bunch of by-elections and I think that's going to make people ask why doesn't he just call a general election to establish a mandate and credibility? Frankly, I think whoever won, that would be the best strategy, to call an immediate snap election. The great risk in that is that if you call a snap election, the next Premier of Alberta might well be Daniel Smith. The party is so broken, uh, I don't know what the next leader can do to fix it. Who will become Alberta's next Premier? That's up to PC party members when they vote September 6th. Anyone willing to place a bet on the results? 
this point, um, unless things change, I still think it's uh, apprentices to lose. Before we thought it'd be a cakewalk for him. It just seems that it's not going to be a cakewalk. There's another issue here, regardless of who wins, I think Prentice likely still will win. A big issue is going to be the number of people who come out to vote. You know, last week I might have, I would have placed a bet on Jim Prentice, but now, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think that I'll, uh, I'll keep my money in my pocket on this one. There's a famous story at the Edmonton Journal that last time we were so certain that Gary Marr was going to win that our former colleague Todd Babiuk did a beautiful long profile of Gary Marr, our first Asian Canadian Premier. It was a lovely story. It never ran in the paper. And I think that should be a warning to all of us. I don't place bets.